Okay, everyone. Um, sorry it's been a while. Uh, my wife was on vacation, and I was forced to do things like paint the house and do the yard and go to Indianapolis to see her friends. So I haven't had a chance to do anything Lightwave related for a while, <clears throat> which is too bad because Lightwave 9.5 is out now. But um, I'm going to do some tutorials now that I'm, I'm getting into it to show you some of the new features. Um, let's uh, clear the scene here and I'll show you this awesome new thing called IKFK Blending. I create a null and let's go to the setup tab, add a bone, all right, and I'll show you how to blend something. We'll just make a, uh, like a little leg setup here. A little pseudo leg setup. Now you're going to notice that the bones look a little bit different here. And uh, I'll have another tutorial that's going to show you all about uh, the new bone features. Let's hit Control N to make a null and we'll call this goal. And we'll edit. And we'll make a ball. Alright. So now it has a ball shape. I should have made that ball shape a bit larger. Okay. So let's set up some IK. We'll click on this, hit M, choose unaffected by IK of descendants. This one I'm going to go. Now you'll notice under controller and limits now, all this stuff has changed. There's now position and scale. So you can, um, for example, <clears throat> have the scale be controlled by the IK or have the position of uh, something be controlled by IK as well as the rotation. Uh, but for right now, we'll just go for a standard setup and we'll do that. And then we'll choose our goal. And once we do, it does pretty much everything for us. Move that around. So now, as you can see, when we move this around, um, it moves. And uh, one, th one of the good things is that um, the IK, I've noticed, is much more stable in this release. So for example, I didn't do anything, no pitch correcting or anything like that. And I'm able to move this on these um, two axes. You've got a little bit of a shake there, but um, I can mess with that later because I haven't pitch corrected or anything like that. But I've noticed that it's, it's much more stable. So anyway, if we go and select the tip of this IK chain, you'll see that we now have um, this uh, IKFK blending. And I'm going to show you how that's useful. Um, so we'll, let's do a little bit of IK move. Oops, I'm moving that instead of that. OK. So now we have some standard IK movement and animation. All right, so now we have some IK going on. Now let's go ahead and blend this out. Hit M, <clears throat> uh, select that little root chain there, and we'll click on the little uh, envelope here, and we'll animate this going from IK to FK. So we'll click here, and we'll create um, some keyframes, and I'm gonna select these as linear. Make sure this is set to zero. So we'll go from zero, to 100, and we'll do that for about 10 frames or so. So now, as we scrub through the timeline, we've got our standard IK, and then as you'll see, once the uh, influence starts to go away, starting at frame 20 and going to frame 30, you'll see that the goal object no longer has control over this hierarchy of bones. So if we were to go here and start rotating this, we can now freely rotate this around and we don't have to worry about where the goal object is. As you can see the goal object is being moved around <clears throat> and nothing is happening. So and uh, it's pretty easy to transition. We'll move that over there and then we'll select this and we'll transition back. Go back to here and let's create some more keyframes. Select linear. We'll make sure that's set to 100. And we'll make sure that this is set to 0. And now we'll scrub through the animation. And we'll see that it starts being controlled by IK here. It relinquishes control. It's controlled at this point by uh, forward kinematics being rotated. And then here it goes back. So there's a point in the middle of this animation where control uh, uh, is relinquished from the goal object and given over to us manually. And this is an extremely powerful uh, thing here that we can do. Let me show you a little quick animation that I did using this. <clears throat> Go to frame one here. Okay, so what we have here is 
we have a little guy, and he's uh, he's going to adjust this chair. His hands are going to stick to that chair, and then once he's done adjusting it, he's going to step back and he's going to wipe his brow. Now this is not very good animation. I whipped this out in like actually five minutes or so, but as you can see, let's let's just go ahead and play through this. And so you'll you'll notice that the goal objects stay there. Now what I did for this animation was. I parented these goal objects to this chair and then I rotated the chair around. So this part of the animation, all this upper body movement here uh, with the arms, I didn't have to animate any of that. Um, all that was done just by parenting those goals to the chair. Now, um, but the problem comes when you want him to step away and do all this stuff. I mean, you would have to do like different reparenting and stuff. And for the most part, most people like to animate with FK for the arms. Uh, as much as they can anyway. <clears throat> so um, at this point what I did was I just used the exact same method. I did my IKFK blending and as you can see we have a little thing here where it's, when it starts up to zero uh, it means that IK is taking over completely and then as it transitions away that means over here at 100% uh, we now have manual control over that. Um, another thing I did was <clears throat> Uh, usually when you're doing your IK, for example, down here on the foot, you'll notice that um, we usually use match goal orientation. So that is very useful for your, your foot object. So for example, um, when you uh, if you do not have match goal orientation on, let me show you what it looks like. So now when I do IK on the foot, the, um, the leg does not bend when he goes, un, you know, when he sticks his foot onto the ground. So um, by having the match goal orientation on, that means that the the foot only um, will bend with the rotation of, of this goal object. <clears throat> Oops, shift seven. All right, so, um, but uh, for here, um, you'll notice that this wrist object is actually uh, controlling the IK. You'll notice I have the match goal orientation off because if I did that, as you can see, when he lets go, his his hand is always going to be pointing at that um, goal object, even though it, it's not really relevant to the animation anymore. So what I did to compensate for that was, I selected the hand, I went to the motion options, and I selected a orient constraint. And these are very useful. Um, you could also, well, for, it, for this uh, animation, for example, I want his hand to match the orientation of the goal object while he's moving the chair around and then once he lets go I want that uh, control to be given back to me complete, completely. So all I did was add this goal or, uh, orient constraint so that means that this hand bone is going to orient like whatever uh, target I choose for this set number of frames. So if I go in and edit you'll see that you have control over the heading pitch and bank independently and again, you have a weight curve here, which you use to animate the influence of uh, the orientation constraint. And so all I did was have an orient constraint for a bit, a little bit of orient constraint, and IKFK blending, and I have this animation here. And let's um, go ahead and do, now here is, here's the little child's rig by itself. And as you can see, the arms and the feet are controlled by IK. Now we'll do, um, let's go ahead and do uh, the uh, the old uh, jumping tutorial I showed you before. Let's